This video will teach you the basics of tripod camera tracking so that we can have accurate depth information for CG advertising. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. If you are interested in joining or checking out all of the amazing perks that we offer, I will have a link down in the description below. Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing amazing. Today we're going to be talking about how to camera track using a tripod method. Uh, now this was suggested by this user, so thanks so much. If you guys have any uh, other questions that you might have inside Blender or visual effects in general, I'd love to get to them. So so leave them down in the comment section down below. But today we're going to be talking about how I actually camera track uh, correctly some tripod footage. I know this has been a very contentious thing, especially with CG advertising. There are a lot of tripod shots. And so I uh, have Blender open right now. I just did a super simple tripod scene inside of Blender. So you can see that we have this result. And I wanted to showcase what we're actually running into and what this method actually solves. Uh, so let's come out to the layout. And you can see here is the scene that we have in the world right now. We basically have a bunch of trackers and then traditional camera tracking uh, things it would actually be projecting based on the environment that we actually have sh uh, shot so we will have some like depth information and stuff in there but uh, you can see with a tripod shot it basically is a sphere that's going around our center point of our camera so right there and you can think of tripod tracking as uh, more akin to like 2d camera tracking uh, and so how do we actually instead of doing a 2d track like this where it gives us this depth information how do we actually extrapolate some depth information so that say for a shot like this for example, if I need to actually model out the scene of this building and actually go ahead and model that out. If I go ahead and do it in the traditional route, you can see if we have our cube here, it's not rotated, nothing is there. And then also the depth uh, information is also incorrect. If I just kind of rotate this uh, cube, how it would be, you can see I can try to eyeball it as much as possible, but it's never going to uh, perfectly line up unless we actually have some of that information. And so I wanted to talk about my method of uh, how I actually do this inside of uh, my clients and stuff like that to actually get uh, the proper depth information so that I can model out a scene like this perfect uh, perfectly accurate uh, inside of a tripod track now we are going to be using a program called synthize today uh, full disclosure they were a previous sponsor of the channel however they are not sponsoring this video at all I do still have an affiliate link if you are interested in the program I'll have that down below that helps me out here on the channel so I'd greatly appreciate it if you check that out anyways let's go ahead and start tracking so first of all, I'm going to go ahead and hit new up here and then just locate the footage. Now I will have the footage down below for free. And then also for my patrons, I'll provide all of the files I'm going to be using today. If you do want to pick apart uh, my actual files uh, so you can do a little bit more learning there. But as you can see, we have this footage right here. We're going to go ahead and open that up. And then if you've never used synthize before, it uh, tries to automatically pick some of these numbers. You just want to double check that this is all accurate. And then let's hit OK. And there we go. Now we have a scene like this. Uh, you can see we basically have a camera tilting up and down on this kind of atrium area. And so we need to go ahead and camera track that. So if you've never used this program before, it makes camera tracking super, super easy. All we need to do is come over here to hit fine tune. I just like to have that on no matter what I'm tracking. And then since we are on a uh, tripod camera track, we can hit on tripod and then we're going to hit this auto button up here. It's going to go ahead and try to calculate everything. And of course, fine tune. Uh, we can see we have our first result up here is our solve error if you come from any other program it's the exact same kind of process there we need to go ahead and get that number as low as possible and so i'm going to come up here instead of tripod we're going to do refine tripod up here and then if you come to the track we're going to clean up some of the trackers you can see we have some high, high error tracks here so I'm going to go ahead and select those. We can hit fix, which basically just gets rid of some of those. And then uh, shift G is the shortcut to go ahead and uh, hit this go button up here. So I'm going to refine it one more time. So we have one more higher track. Let's uh, shift G again. And then shift C, by the way, is the uh, shortcut to actually clean up the tracks. We have one more here. Let's fix that. Shift G. Uh, and then we can maybe push this down a little bit more. Again, this is just giving us some more accurate data into our scene. So let's fix that. Uh, shift G and there you go. We have a 0.79. That's pretty good for a scene like this. So I'm going to go ahead and call that uh, done for the camera tracking. Now we need to go ahead and actually place in uh, some objects into our scene and set up the rotation and everything. This is, uh, as you can see out here, kind of the same result we'd be getting inside of Blender. It's basically a, a full circle around our camera. So unfortunately, it doesn't automatically go ahead and try to get that depth, depth information again because uh, camera tracking inside of the 3D programs needs parallax data. And since there is no parallax, Relax data for tripod shots, it can't give us any depth information or anything over here. So a way we're going to trick the program into actually giving us the correct rotation and everything into our scene is we're going to go ahead and set up in the lens tab over here. We're going to set up some uh, axes lines. So I'm going to come all the way back uh, to the first frame. I find the first frame uh, just gives us a lot of information to work off with. What we're looking for in a shot like this is a lot of like lines that are 
perpendicular to each other and lines that have a lot of other uh, parallel lines in uh, between them so that we can actually determine the axes uh, such as the X and Y and Z uh, inside of your uh, 3D program of choice. And so that's what we're going to be doing and telling the software manually so that it can go ahead and rotate the scene accordingly. So what we can do is uh, down in this section, we have this add line right here. So if I click on that, we can now add lines into the scene. And so now uh, the whole thing that we're going to be doing is we're just going to be clicking and then dragging to add a line. And so this line we're just going to say is going to be on the X axis. And so there you go. It's uh, now populated on the X axis. You can see here, if you do need to go ahead and reposition it, you can zoom in and we want to try to get as close to uh, this line as possible. I know it's a little pixelated, but as long as we kind of eyeball it as much as possible, just make sure it's on the same parallel. Uh, there we go. So now we have the X axis defined. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Y axis. Now this is where you have to use a little bit of your imagination uh, since this uh, atrium I'm guessing is a right, uh, you know, right angle building and stuff. So that means that this uh, kind of walkway is perfectly perpendicular to this walkway. And so that's where I'm using some judgment there. Uh, so I'm gonna assume that. And so let's come right here. We're gonna do this line right here. So just click and drag again. We're going to do that on the Y axis right there. And so they are kind of on the same level. I don't necessarily think that you need them to be on the same level, but I always find that that helps a little bit in actually rotating the scene. But there you go. Now we have the axes defined. Of course, to get some better uh, results inside of the rotation and everything, uh, we want to add some parallel lines to those axes as well. So for example, down here, uh, we have all these straight lines. I picked this footage because it's kind of the best case scenario for a thing like this. Uh, but let's go ahead and click and drag a line down here as well in this walkway. And then we're going to go to parallel to Y again, because this is the Y axis. We want to find any parallel uh, lines to that. And so let's just uh, place that a little bit better. I think I misplaced uh, some of these lines right down here. Perfect. And then we'll place one up here. I always like to try to place them uh, farther away from each other because the further away they're from each other, the uh, more accurate it'll actually be. Uh, this has to do with uh, where the lines are here are actually going to meet. Uh, that will determine the horizon line and the uh, vanishing point, I believe it's called, and stuff like that. And so this is all the math that the program is hopefully going to do on its own end. So there you can see we have a, a couple of parallel lines. I'm just going to stick with these two for now. We'll uh, solve it and see if we need to add any more in the future. But let's go ahead and do the same thing for the X over here. So I do have some parallel lines on this as well. So we're going to do parallel to X axis, and we'll do one up here as well. So like right there, parallel to X axis like that. So there you go. Uh, the final thing I like to do is just do one on the Z axis. And so down here we have some Z axis lines. So I'm going to click and drag and just make some Z axis. So parallel to Z. The reason I'm not doing an actual Z axis is because, because I find when you actually uh, determine a Z axis, uh, sometimes it gives you errors, uh, whether, you know, it's, you know, it can't figure out what is actually happening or anything like that. So anyways, I have the two parallel Z axes right there. I think we are ready to align the scene. If I come over here, we can go and hit align and it should, uh, you know, you saw the uh, screen there. If it kind of zooms in and stuff like that, that means that the scene has actually found a match and aligned the scene as much as possible. In order to check this, I'm going to come back out to the 3D tab over here. And now, as you can see, we have uh, the scene is actually switched and actually facing the right way. We can add a box up here. I'm just going to add a simple box and then move it up. You can actually see it's moving down right now. We'll fix that issue in a little bit once we import this back into Blender. Uh, but I just want to make sure that everything is kind of uh, lining up and matching. And as you can see, the rotation looks pretty good in my eyes. It looks like this side is following along with the buildings over here. And then this side is following, uh, following along with the wall over here as well. And so to my eyes, that looks pretty good. And also this is just a time where I can make sure that the track is set up correctly, uh, that everything is tracking. And uh, since, again, this tripod track, it's mostly a 2D track, uh, you can see it's actually uh, giving us some pretty good, good results and not sliding around. So yeah, now we are ready to export this out into Blender to go ahead and do some final touches uh, to set up the scene. So I'm going to go to File, Export, and then go down to the Blender Python Export, and you can save this wherever you want to save it. Okay, so here's where I want to save it. Uh, remember to version it up, and then we're going to go ahead and save uh, the project. This is very important. You want to select your uh, Blender version right here, and then down here you want to open in Blender and go ahead and paste that file path that Blender is located in here. If you don't have that in correctly, it 
actually won't open the program after. So just a quick tip there. Uh, let's hit OK. And uh, like I said, Blender is opening right now. It'll take a little bit to actually uh, import in some of the data. So we'll give it a little bit. OK, so here is the scene. Uh, some weird bug is that you can see everything is not aligned right now. All I find is if you go forward a frame and then back a frame, it resets itself. I don't really understand uh, why that bug happens inside of Blender. But as you can see, we have the tr camera tracking set up in the scene. Everything is following along. Uh, we do still have some errors, like I said before. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, clean up some stuff. I don't need this light in the scene. Uh, also, it makes some collections I don't really love. I just like having a simple camera tracker uh, collection. And then also, real quick, I'll select the synthize world and the camera. We'll go ahead and M, add a new camera collection just so we can organize everything uh, so it's nice and neat up here. Uh, now, here is the problem, like I was saying before, if I actually go ahead and add a cube into the scene, everything is rotated nice. But now if I hit G, Z, and then I wanna go in the uh, uh, positive direction on the Z, so like up one unit, you can see it's actually moving down. And so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and rotate the scene. I find to do, uh, to do this inside of Blender is a little bit easier. I know you can do it inside of Synthize, but I just find uh, it's so much simpler to do inside of Blender. All you need to do is select the uh, synth eyes world. This is basically just a parent uh, of every single tracker, including the camera into our scene. And so all we need to do is just rotate on the X 90 degrees or sorry, 180, because we need to flip it uh, fully upside down. So now if we uh, G Z and then one, you can see the box is actually raising upwards. And so, yeah, so that's pretty much everything set up. This is where you would go and add uh, your CGI. Of course, uh, while we're at it, we can go ahead and make the scale uh, set up correctly. So I'm just resizing the synthize world to be uh, to make sure that this is roughly like two meters or something like that. Uh, so that looks pretty accurate. Uh, next thing I would do is, of course, model it out, uh, do some camera tracking tests. So I can quickly walk uh, walk you through kind of what I would do here. Uh, first of all, this cube is perfectly in the center of the world. And so I do want to move the synthize world so that the cube remains in the center. Uh, we'll just do this line of this uh, little building right here. So let's go into wireframe and then Alt Z to hide uh, the uh, X-ray. And then we can just move this here until that little line is along this line right here. So that looks good. And then I'm going to bring a new window up here. And this is just some more stuff that we can do to make sure that uh, everything is matching. So I'm just going to quickly model out the kind of center of this uh, like structure right here. So this center pillar, I'll just make like that. And then we'll bring this out here. I want to align kind of the edge of this building right here like that. That is looking good and perfectly lines up all the way up there. So we know uh, already that the camera track is pretty accurate there. And then finally, we can do this side as well. So I'm just bringing this all the way over here and lining up that side as well. So there you go. We can double check this. That is tracking pretty well. And then let's also uh, determine where some of these, uh, we'll say some of these guardrails of the actual uh, walkways and stuff. We'll go ahead and uh, get the position for that as well, uh, just to showcase even more how much it's uh, camera track. So we'll add a plane. I'll rotate that. And we have this like little line here. That's like where the two intersect. So I'm just going to move this one back until they intersect right there where uh, they should intersect in the real world. So we're just going to scale, uh, go into edit mode. We'll scale this up and then just move it until it's like right there. Scale on the Z. And then I'm going to subdivide it just so we can see some of the wireframe. Let's duplicate this. Let's rotate that 90 degrees. And again, we have a little line over here. I kind of nailed that actually, uh, where we have uh, they, them intersecting. So there we go. And then uh, we'll do this one as well. So go into uh, edit mode, a uh, subdivide, and then uh, shift R just to add some wireframes so we can see. By the way, if you're seeing uh, this view or whatever, the shortcut again is Alt C, so you can actually uh, not see the X-ray. And so let's get rid of this. This is kind of a nice little test I do, no matter what I'm camera tracking, just to make sure everything is sticking. So we'll kind of look at everything here. And we're just looking to see uh, if everything kind of sticks, if anything's sliding around or anything like that. And after that, um, after we kind of understand that everything looks accurate, this is where we can maybe start modeling it out more. Uh, and so, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I think uh, we have a pretty good camera track right now. This is part of the process where I would save it as and start actually getting into the details of modeling out this building and stuff. Uh, of course, depending on what I'm actually doing for this shot, but that is a much nicer process. And we actually have 3D data into the scene, uh, where 
course before we were doing a lot of guesstimation and stuff like that. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Hopefully this entire process makes sense and you can apply it to your own work. I know before uh, this method that I actually found, I uh, was super confused of how to actually get depth information into a tripod scene. And so this method really, really helps that process along, especially if you need to model out intricate building, it's very, very important to uh, get the right rotation into the scene uh, just because everything is kind of related to the camera track in that regard. And so getting it out of the gate uh, from the start is super, super important for that stuff. Anyways, thank you so, so much for watching. Again, we have a Patreon and Discord. I greatly appreciate if you guys check them out down below. Uh, but anyways, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.